What is up, friends? My name is uh, Timmy Joe. I make videos about computers on the internet for you. And uh, another motherboard review here. This is, in fact, the cheapest X370 AM4 motherboard you can buy on Newegg. How interesting. So why, why do I have it? Well, I needed a motherboard to do some stuff and things. We have the uh, APU here. The uh, bulldozer one that everyone's already done a review on, but I'll be doing some stuff with that anyways. A little bit later, a little build. But I uh, ran out of motherboards, figured uh, why not try X370 and do it on the absolute cheap. So, um, you know, that's, that's a thing, and I totally regret my decision. For a little bit more money, I might have been a lot happier, because my goodness, this is not a very good motherboard at all in fact it's the worst rise of motherboard i've looked at yet and uh you know this is this is supposed to be the better chipset x370 so let's have a little look see and what's it what's it supposed to include at the x370 okay well um you know you look at some things and stuff it doesn't say anything here necessarily about it overclocking better it's got more usb more pcie lanes and it's supposed to have sli support i thought but I picked this slide in particular because on that chipset it says enthusiast. And this is AMD themselves writing this. Okay, the uh, B350 is supposed to be for, you know, the mainstream. But, you know, you get a lot of really good boards. This one right here, this is a B350 from ASRock. And it's 10 times better than this. And it's a micro ATX. And, you know, we'll get into that in a little bit. bit but it's a hell of a lot cheaper. So, uh, you know, when I bought this, I thought, uh, I didn't look into the power delivery, and there's no reviews on this specific model. There are a lot of these models with an extra letter or number after them, the Gaming K something, or there's a B350 version of this board. But I really should have done a little bit more research because the power delivery on this is, is terrible. So let's get into it. This is $119.99 American. Okay, so that's the cheapest one on Newegg. There's some open box stuff and whatever, but this this one here by like ten or twenty dollars is the cheapest X370 you can buy. And what I assume from that is that it has, you know, and I looked at the specs, it has like no frills whatsoever, but it would overclock well, and it would have really good support for things like memory and overclocking, and uh, you know maybe you wouldn't have RGB, you wouldn't have two M.2 slots. Uh, and the PCIe slots and stuff like that would be limited, but certain things about it I would expect out of the X370, especially considering for $20 less, you get this exact board with the B350 chipset, and it has more stuff on it. This one has RGB, has a little bit more lights, it has another little metal shroud, and another extra full-size PCIe slot. So I was like, okay, I, I thought that that would be, you know, for, for sure. But if you look up in here, the uh, it actually has the exact same VRM, the exact same power delivery as the board I have in here. So you shouldn't really expect much more in the way of overclocking except for BIOS options. Now I'm going to fire up right here. This is the BIOS. It is the most limited uh, BIOS. I'm sure all of these are the same pretty much, but considering I bought this uh, Gigabyte because the Aorus uh, motherboard I have for my Threadripper is so dang good, I thought it would translate down the line, but it really doesn't. The BIOS is so limited. It doesn't even have direct voltage control. It has an offset. So I guess all that could be forgiven. You know, if maybe it worked well, if it had good support, but no, it, it doesn't. We'll get into that in just a second. But look, here's another one for 10 more dollars. You know, it's got pretty much the same power delivery, though, if you check that out. Uh, and this one has a little bit more frills on it. Uh, but, uh, you know, I really should have got this one. You know, it's not much more money, $60. But this is an Aorus kind of version, and it has a much better power delivery on it, VRMs and stuff like that. So uh, I sh guess I shouldn't have, you know, totally cheaped out. But I learned my lesson, and I'll have to get my hands on one of these boards. But I got Threadripper, you know, I'm, it's not like I'm starving for good computers around here. 
so yeah, it's, it's kind of sucks. But here's my ASRock board, and you, you see the power delivery on it has more uh, a better VRM. Okay, there's more uh, phases and uh, more options in the BIOS here. So it really, you know, I, I love this board. It has direct voltage control. It has very good memory support. It's just it hasn't really been a problem. So what's my tale? real quick of using this over a couple of days. I tried to get it working in here, uh, you know, as well as this, this board here, and I had a lot of trouble. Number one, I have about four different kits of RAM from four different manufacturers in varying speeds, ranging from uh, 2400 all the way up to 3200, and all of them booted on this board with the BIOS that came with it. I'll give them that. But any overclocking was met with some severe headaches, even after a BIOS update. I was very rarely able to get memory past 2400 on any of the, uh, the, RAM, the RAM sticks except for uh, the really good ballistics RAM I just reviewed from my Threadripper. That must be Samsung BDI stuff because it, it really does go to 3200 on anything. But uh, this RAM I have in it is uh, 2666. And uh, what's really weird about it is you put it in, you have to load the XMP profile. Otherwise, the t if the timings aren't set, uh, if the board's trying to do it automatically, it won't boot past the BIOS. It always boot loops into the BIOS. Once you set the XMP profile, it works well. Any other stick of RAM I tried that wasn't the really good ballistic stuff, uh, some GEAL stuff, some ADATA stuff, it uh, would not boot any like any XMP profile. Okay, I had to manually set uh, an overclock, and I was very frustrated because I kept thinking I could at least go to 2666. It wouldn't boot at 2666. I had to go to 2400 and make sure the voltage was right and make sure that the timings were all right. But uh, in playing around with it, I just got frustrated as all hell because sometimes it would even boot but you'd have severe instability going into Windows and it would boot loop in blue screen. So this is not the board for good uh, you know, memory support, that's for sure. So how's the overclocking? Well, I can get on my chip to uh, 3.75 gigahertz, 3.75 3 gigahertz, 3, 3.975 gigahertz, okay? So almost four gigahertz with a really good cooler like this Enermax AIO that's in here. So I usually run at 3.975 gigahertz at 1.425 volts. Uh, if I'm like really wanting to get the most out of my system, I dial it back a little bit here to make sure the fans stay low and whatever and what have you. Uh, but when I was using it for video editing, yeah, for sure. I, especially if I had an AIO. I cannot with this AIO get this past 3.9 gigahertz no matter what I do. So it even has poorer overclocking performance than a board that's $45 cheaper than it. So you know what? Skip this one, guys. It sucks. And I would have, even have a hard time recommending any of these gaming boards. If you're going for an inexpensive uh, X370 board or if you're going for a B350 board, I would say ASRock, Asus, they're, they're pretty much all golden. ASRock's been really, really good to me. But uh, stay away from MSI, Gigabyte. Uh, those I've had experiences with those two, and the experiences with them have been iffy, to say the, the least. I, but I think when you get into the more expensive stuff, you're a little bit better off, but stay away from it at the low end. I'm at Watch Jimmy Joe on Instagram and Twitter. I hope you like this video. I just wanted to give you guys a little, you know, boo into it. You can get a B350 board, an ASRock uh, Pro, whatever, AM4 Pro, AB350 Pro uh, in the ATX or micro ATX that is so much better for so much less than any budget X370 or even B350 board from Gigabyte or maybe even MSI. And if you're unsure about it, go, go Asus. I never really had a problem with Asus. So I'll see you guys in another video. I watched Jimmy Joe. Don't forget my contest. Check out the video that plays after this. There's a contest where if you subscribe, follow me on Twitter, you could win some cash prizes. And uh, I got a review of this APU coming up. I got a review of a Noctua cooler. I still need to do this AIO from Metermax for the Ryzen system. A whack stuff, wearable camera I got sent to me, some headphones, some cool stuff's coming up on the channel. So keep watching and then I'm gonna stop pointing at the camera and trying to do an outro and then talking more. I will 
See you in another video. Bye.